Hey, this is Chris from Mission Capital, and today I'm going to show you a nice little Excel trick that can speed up your monthly variance analysis. So what I've got in front of me here is a list of customers. Let's just pretend this was how our customers performed last month. I've got 40 of them here. I had our original budget by customer, the actual results, and then the variance in terms of dollars and then percentage. And so at the end of the month, your team is going to want to know, well, you know, why did certain customers do better than we thought, or why did some do worse? And I've got a huge list here, and it's going to take me a long time to kind of go through each one. And so it's really important to focus on the 80-20 principle when it comes to variance analysis. You know, let's focus on the ones that had the biggest impact. And so we can quickly figure that out using the large function and the small function in Excel, and then we can do a cool index match thing to figure out which customers had that impact. And so let's just start with the large function. This is going to show us which customers had the biggest upside relative to our budget. And what the large function does is it ranks numbers in the order that you specify. So we're going to find the five largest. I can do equals large, and then the array is my range. So I'm going to click on the variance, and then the K here is just the order that I want them to sort in. So I can click the first one here. And I can see that 356 was my largest variance, which I can actually see is right here. So I'm going to bring this down with Control D, and I've got all of my largest variances in one place. And now here's the, the nice trick that you can do. You can use the index match function on this number to figure out the customer. So I'll show you. We're going to do equals index. The first thing is where do I want to look? I want to look at my customers, and then I want to match my number, which is right here, in my variance section there. So I'm going to click on that, lock that up, and then use a zero, which is an exact match, and hit enter. And you can see now it says the largest variance was customer seven. So let's look over there, customer seven. Indeed, there's that 356. So as I drag these down, right away I've got my top five customers. So as an example, the fifth one was customer 17. Let's look down here. Here's 17, and there's that 79. So really quick way to isolate the biggest needle movers at the top. Likewise, we can use the small function to go the opposite way. So let's just go ahead and do that here, equals small. Same thing, I'm going to pull from my variance analysis, and then I want to rank them in order. So click this here, 1056, pretty huge number. We don't know where that is yet, but our index match function is going to help, that, help us. We pull this down, control D, and I've got my top five uh, misses over here. We can use the same index match function that we did for large, into small, and since we already built it by locking our ranges here, all I have to do is copy it and paste it. So I'll do Control V, and it looks like this huge whiff came from customer 40, so all the way at my bottom of the list, and then here it is right there. So I'd really want to know, you know, what was going on with that one. Now let me drag these down, and I'm done. So now, quickly using the large function and the small function, I've got my top upsides and my top misses. And so now here's how you can take your analysis to the next level, right? A junior person might just send this over to the manager and say, you know, here you go, I ran the variance analysis, top five. You know, that's nice, that's helpful, but where you can really be helpful to your team is go ahead and figure out why each of these happened. You know, maybe there's a rep that's in charge of each of these customers, or they fall in a different segment, and just reach out to them and say, hey, you know, I'm working on some variance analysis, I noticed this, was wondering if you could provide some insight that I could maybe include in an email to the team. And then when you send out this email, well now you have a reason for each one of these and then the management team can kind of dive into them as needed in their own separate meetings as opposed to just spending a huge meeting, everybody figuring out what's going on, nobody has any idea, and you're going to spend the entire meeting talking about one or two of these and not get to the other eight. So this is a nice way for you to step away from first your business analysis and then go up to a strategic thinking person or part of the organization get away from the model, and actually add some value to the company. So I hope you found this video valuable, a little bit longer than the other ones, but it takes a little while to go through these multiple formulas. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next one.